All right, guys, so any wild guesses on what do you think are in these two boxes? I'll tell you that they are heavy, but not as heavy as you'd think they'd be. They are only able to be shipped via ground. You can't ship these in an aircraft. And they are kind of a pricey upgrade. However, one that for a lot of people is a very worthwhile upgrade. So hang tight. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so here they are, two Lion Safari UT1300 lithium-ion batteries. Now, Lion Energy provided these batteries to me. They wanted me to review them and give an honest evaluation on how they performed. I really didn't know if I wanted lithium-ion batteries, mainly because in the fifth wheel, I'll probably be upgrading to a new fifth wheel at some point, and I didn't want to go through the trouble of kind of swapping out the whole system. In my trailer, however, I could definitely use them because I do a lot of projects in my cargo trailer, and it's definitely something that I think will help me out, especially when I'm plugging in to my inverter. So let's talk about these. Let's talk a little bit more about what they are, what they do, why somebody might want these. But first of all, let's talk about the warranty. These batteries have a lifetime warranty. So Lion Energy claims that these can be drained and recharged over 3,500 times. That's why they back them up with a lifetime warranty. Also, what's nice is that they can hold a charge three times longer than a traditional battery. So that's also nice. So basically, you just don't have to worry about them prematurely discharging or discharging the same way a lead acid or an AGM battery might. So initially, one of the main things that might draw somebody to one of these is that it lasts roughly 14 times longer than a traditional deep cycle lead acid battery. And again, that's where they get the lifetime warranty claim off of these. And going back to the topic of how long these things last, basically what they tell you is that you don't even need to trickle charge them every three or four months like you might need to with a traditional battery. They say these things can hold a charge up to two years on their own without any type of trickle charge. Now keep in mind, that is not considering parasitic draw. So if you have something that's pulling a parasitic draw from your batteries, they're going to drain regardless of what you have. The nice thing about lithium ion batteries is you don't have to maintain them at 100% charge or near 100% charge to get the full power output that you might need to operate things like your landing gear or other components like your awnings, your slides. In some cases, as a lead acid or an AGM battery gets weaker, some of those components aren't going to work or operate as well. They may slow down or just may not work, period. Whereas the benefits of lithium ion, of course, is that they will continue to work essentially until the battery discharges to the point to where it's pretty much dead. Another nice feature is the fact that you don't have to worry so much about climate that they're in as well. So with typical batteries, you have to be very careful because they tend to charge slower or drain faster whenever it's super hot or super cold outside. Lithium ion batteries are designed to operate a little bit better and basically between about 32 and 113 degrees, you can charge it without any problem and they'll discharge normally at negative four degrees to 131 degrees at 100% rate. So that's another really nice thing about lithium ion batteries. So now let's talk about power output. So it's commonly referred to as a 12.8 volt, 105 amp hour battery, which is equivalent to 1,344 watt hours. So basically 12.8 volts times 105 amp hours. So the normal voltage is 12.8 volts at 105 amp hours. And if you're wondering how these perform in terms of sharp power spikes, it can do upwards of 900 amps for a single spike or about a millisecond, and then it can run at 250 amps for about a minute, but it can pretty much maintain 150 amp continuous capacity if you're if you have something that needs or draws that much power continuously and digging a little deeper into the instructions it actually says that these things weigh 23 pounds each so that is really cool max charge rate is 100 amps and these are lithium ion iron phosphate batteries or what a lot of people call lfp lithium ferrophosphate so these are the safest type of batteries that are pretty much on the market. A lot of people are concerned about upgrading to lithium ion because they think they could pose a safety risk. Anyways, let's tear into these boxes and take a look at what these things are all about. So real quickly, before I fully unwrap them, what I do want to point out is how well these things are wrapped when they're shipped. First of all, the packaging is amazing. They put them inside of these boxes and then they wrap them with this foam all the way around them. But what's really nice is that these boxes are inside of another box that has foam on top of them. What 
that means is they're unlikely to get damaged in transit. And what it also means is that if you're cutting into the box with a knife, you really don't have to worry about cutting through and actually damaging the battery or puncturing the battery. They've done a really good job packaging this entire assembly up, shipping it out, so there's really not much of a chance of damaging them. Even though I have seen some pretty beat up stuff come in from some of these freight carriers. Okay, so now that I have them unpackaged, check these out. These are really cool. Absolutely love the fact that they're so light. I mean, they really weigh very little. 23 pounds per battery. Nowhere near the weight that you would expect to see from an AGM battery or a lead-acid battery. Like I said, roughly half the weight. I love the fact that they include these little screw-down terminals that screw right into the top of the posts here. So you don't really need to get all those adapters or the clamps that have the smaller screws. This gives you the ability to essentially screw down your cables directly to the post, and I love that. I also love the fact that it has an indicator here to turn the battery on and actually see what your power level is currently at. That is really cool, and that's something, again, you don't see on a lead-acid battery or a AGM battery. This is really cool. The user manual is simply online. You just take a picture with the QR code here and it will take you to their online user manual for the device. These are super cool. And I'm gonna mount these in the trailer. So when I mount these in the front of the cargo trailer, I'm gonna build a box eventually around them just to keep them from moving around. But for right now, I wanna get them all connected and I wanna see how they perform, especially with my little micro refrigerator in there. I am gonna pair it to the solar panel that I have on the roof. That solar panel provides seven to eight amps worth of power. And I'll have a second one that I'll be adding as well. And they're gonna be going through the Red Arc charging system. So the Red Arc battery maintainer is solar capable and it is designed to work with lithium ion or LFP batteries. It's also able to charge from a vehicle. So once everything is connected, I can have these batteries charging while the truck is connected to the trailer, or I can have them charging when it's in storage simply from the solar panels that'll be on the roof. So that is really cool. And these provide a tremendous amount of output. So I shouldn't have any problem getting a lot of life out of these, getting a lot of usage time out of whatever I have in the trailer. So let's jump right to it and get these things installed in the cargo trailer. All right, guys. So I have everything all connected now. As you can see, I have both the Lion Energy lithium-ion phosphate batteries connected. They are connected in parallel and mounted to a tray. Both reds are connected together, both blacks are connected together. Black lead is running to a negative ground block, and the hot lead, that's that green cable, it's the only 99% pure 4 gauge copper wire I had left, is ran to the low voltage disconnect and then ran through a breaker into a positive connection block right here, basically a junction block that all the wires can connect to. From there, I have my inverter connected to it, as well as my negative lead for my inverter. I also have the red arc connected. So the red arc is what's going to be used to maintain these batteries. It is designed to charge and maintain lithium ion phosphate batteries through either solar. So it acts as a solar controller as well as vehicle power. So the next project is going to be to run heavy gauge wire out this part of the trailer up to the front A-frame so I can connect it to the tow vehicle, which will provide a charge through this to charge the batteries appropriately and almost to full. What's great about that is it's gonna provide up to 25 amps worth of charging whenever I'm traveling. So that's gonna do a great job to maintain these batteries while I'm driving, whereas the solar is gonna maintain them while it's in storage. And I'm gonna be adding a second solar panel on top of the trailer, so it's gonna get more current than what the single solar panel is capable of providing. So everything is connected well. My ground connection here is also grounded outside of the trailer onto the frame, and it's connected through here as well. So everything is connected the way that I need it to be connected. I have two fuses in line and I have a breaker plus the batteries have circuit protection built into them and the red arc has multiple layers of protection built into it as well as the go power 300 watt inverter and that's a pure sine wave inverter I reviewed recently. So this is going to give me a lot of capability, primarily the ability to run lighting in here more effectively, to run a fan, to run a small refrigerator, or whatever small items I might need to run that require 110 power. I'm also going to put a couple 12 volt outlets in here as well and 12 volt connections so I can run other things that might require 12 volt power. So this is going to be really good. Plus, it's going to give me the ability to charge my power drills. And what I really like about the Red Arc is that it is going to safely be able to charge 
charge these lithium ion phosphate or really any battery technology without excessively discharging your vehicle's battery or causing any type of damage to your tow vehicle. They claim that this is going to safely charge batteries from your vehicle's battery, which is really cool. And it always looks for solar first, which is also a huge perk. So this entire setup is really designed to give you power while you're off grid from solar, give you power while you're towing down the vehicle to fully charge your batteries, as well as do it in the safest possible way and supporting multiple different types of battery technology, including lithium ion phosphate. So that's my setup, and this is going to be an ever-evolving setup. So I'm going to do more to clean it up, more to get as much usefulness out of it as possible, and I'm going to be demonstrating and highlighting these batteries and how well they function. And I'll give you my opinion on these batteries over the long term. I think this setup is going to work really well for me. I think I've done just about everything I can do to make the setup as safe as possible. But this is how I'm going to have the cargo trailer equipped. And it's going to give me a lot of auxiliary power, especially for the inverter and any 12 volt items I might need in here. Anyways, guys, I'll put a link to all of this in the description of the video. That way, if you're interested in the Red Arc, you're interested in the Lion Energy batteries, or the GoPower 300 watt pure sine wave inverter, you'll have access to getting all of it, including the low voltage disconnect right there. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.